Okay, so today I'd like to show you something that uh, hopefully get to test soon. Um, not testing it today because it's liquid intercooler on the duster. We've upgraded that system. The reason we're not testing today is it's a little wide out. So yeah, it should run plenty cool. Anyway, this is our turbocharged slant six. And anyway, this last summer we took an put a temperature gauge type radiator cap onto our intercooler system. So this cap was sitting here for the summer and what that ended up showing me is that after about half hour or so drive we were getting heat soaked. Um, essentially the temperature in that coolant was about equivalent to what the engine was running. And that's why I mean by heat soak, is we really weren't gaining any. Um, we're still obviously pumping heat out, which is good. So the system used to go from this radiator with this little pump through the intake manifold on this side came out on this and then across the master cylinder and through the uh, actual intercooler and back through the fender to the top of the radiator. So that system worked fairly well but it was miserable to bleed. Um, even though I tried to each have, have each stage a little higher, uh, it, yeah, it was miserable. So with the combination of the problems, we've now separated the two systems. We now have a second intercooler. So there's cap for that system. Tucked up in there is another radiator on this side of the car. And so that system is actually coming across bottom of the car um, so way down in there there's actually a line coming over to the intake manifold now and then out from the intake manifold comes across and back into the top of the radiator that should about double uh, our actual cooling capacity they're also separate because the intake manifold is, of course, next to a high heat source. So it may have to work harder than the intercooler system. It sits farther away, um, has its own opportunities. Plus, the cooler I can get that air, the cooler the air is coming in, and the less of this has to work. So, and also with that, I had to buy some new radiator hose and ended up finding this nice product from HPS. They make a lot of silicone products, but it sold as clear heater hose. And it's not super clear, but uh, it still works. And that's uh, led me to also find that these pumps, if they're turned on too rapidly, is actually uh, cavitating. So you end up seeing that by uh, small bubbles being formed before the pump. So if it's pulling too hard through the radiator and it creates a bit of noise whereas these the system should be really quiet um, the, so all that required to get around that is to ramp up the pumps so start them out a little slower and then increase as they go so and part of that control is all handled by the, the Haltech in this car and so they Throttle position and or manifold pressure, depending on which side you're looking at, is what's dictating that, and that's part of where it slowly ramps it up with uh, running our uh, standard little solid state relays. Now, the other thing we've added is temperature probes into both coolant systems. So we actually know what the coolant temperature is for each system, and then the fans are based off of what that temperature is to 
maximize our cooling. We'll probably end up improving airflow in the front of the car into both those radiators at some point, but that's farther down the road. I think we'll first test this and see where we go.